What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the roof aerodynamics of passenger cars. So we're gonna be going through the effects of the roof on the drag coefficient, then lift induced drag, which is quite an interesting topic for this particular geometry, and then the drag area, which you may not have heard of, but it's an industry standard. So let's start off with the roof in particular. So let's say we have the front windshield, which is like this, and then we have the roof, and then we have the back. Now with a roof, if you have something like this and the flow is coming in this direction, the flow hits the windshield and it comes up. If this angle is very sharp, then the flow stands a good chance of separating at this corner. If it separates, you then start to get quite a big wake up here. If you increase the wake like this, the pressure drag coefficient, so the pressure drag coefficient and the pressure drag will skyrocket. Likewise, at the back, let's say this is more rounded, so the flow stays attached. Then we get to the back. And then at the back, this angle is very sharp. This is the angle for the backlight. This back window here, the technical term is backlight. So let's say the flow comes along here and then it separates over this edge here because it's too sharp. And then we'll get quite a big wake here as well. What this does is it also increases the pressure drag as well. So both of these are a problem. How do we overcome these things? The first thing we can do is round the front. So this is not necessarily the front windshield. The front windshield is typically, the glass itself is quite straight. It's not very curved very much. Ideally, you'd get the roof to be rounded a little bit. So you'd have the roof coming up a little bit and then go into the regular type of roof that we see and then it's rounded at the back. And then it goes into the fairly straight back uh, rear window or the backlight. The reason why we don't want to make the front windshield or the back window uh, curved is because that's usually a little bit more expensive. And then you have other problems as well that crop into it. So curving the roof itself is usually a far better way to go. And what this does is you have the flow coming along and then it'll go over the top and it'll stay attached, ideally. <laughs> and then as it goes around the back, it stays attached as well. So that means that the pressure drag coefficient drops now and we get a lower overall drag coefficient. So the total drag coefficient drops. So the question is, is there really a limit to how much we should be rounding this? Should, can we like just do a complete dome like this and this will reduce the drag even more because if a little bit of rounding is good, is a lot of rounding even better? Well, the answer is no. And for a couple of reasons. One of them is something called lift-induced drag. So if you, any of you know uh, anything about like airfoils, for example, or lifting surfaces, you'll have heard this term before. If you haven't um, studied any of these topics, then this is probably a little bit of a foreign term to you. But what lift-induced drag is, is drag that is just that, it's induced by the lift. So what happens is if we have a car, so I'm just gonna draw quite a idealized car and I'm going to round the roof a lot. And then we have the boot, then we have the front here, then the back, like this. We have flow coming underneath and this surface is quite straight. Flow coming over the top, this surface is quite curved. What happens is that the pressure, sorry, the pressure drops. So we have a net pressure difference from the bottom to the top, which is positive. So that means that we actually have a lift being produced. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. For cars usually it is because you reduce the stability of the car. But in this particular case, we also induce some sort of drag and this is called lift induced drag. So what happens is we actually have like these vortices that form, big vortices. They're not very strong in this particular case because the lift is not very great, but there is still some semblance of this kind of vortex happening on each side of the car. This is where the low pressure on top and the high pressure on the bottom can bleed over and we get the, all this flow migrating from bottom to top. And again, this is not, this is exaggerated, this drawing, but it does happen to some extent. This is wasted energy and this is akin to a wingtip vortex. So this is what is in lift induced drag. We won't get this drag unless we have lift and lift is because we have a difference in pressure from bottom to top. So we have this movement of fluid from one surface to the other, which induces this vortex here. So if we round the roof too much, we'll get too much lift being produced and then we'll get this vortex forming, which is, and the, the more lift that we produce, the stronger this vortex is and the more energy that is wasted. So we actually have the induced drag coefficient skyrocketing. This results in the total drag coefficient as well increasing. So if we round the roof too much, we'll get into this situation here. What's more, the more we round the roof, the more high, the higher it becomes. So if we have 
the roof around it a little bit, we've only increased the roof by this much. But if we roof around the roof a lot, we've increased the roof by this much. So it's a lot more. What does this do? If we look here, we can then take a cross section of this of this car and we can figure out what the cross sectional area is. Now remember that the drag of the drag is equal to half times the density times the velocity squared times by the cross sectional area times the drag coefficient for the total drag. So if we reduce the total drag coefficient, that doesn't necessarily mean that we reduce the overall drag of the car. This comes into a, a topic called the drag area. If we increase the cross sectional area, the drag can also increase. And this is what happens with rounding the roof too much. What's more, in the automotive industry, we actually use this term, which is called the drag area. And this is just the cross sectional area times the drag coefficient. And the reason why we use this is because it is, a, practically speaking, it's more of a better resemblance of a car or any vehicle's drag production than just the drag coefficient. So let me explain why. Let's say we have a truck and we've managed to make it very streamlined. So the drag coefficient is like 0.1, for example, it's really good, better than pretty much any car on the market these days. But does that mean that it's more aerodynamic than other cars? In theory, the drag coefficient is lower. So, okay, that's great. But when we put it onto the road and we drive around, we're still gonna be using more gasoline because the area of the truck is much greater than a regular car. It might be four or five times greater. So even though we've got a drag coefficient, maybe half that of a regular car, or maybe a third, let's say, the drag, the area is four times as much or five times as much, which means that the drag area is actually greater than a regular car. So even though we have a lower drag coefficient, the overall drag is still higher because the surface area or the cross section area here is greater. So this is where this term drag area comes into it. So if we round the roof too much, the roof pops up too much and we increase the surface, the cross sectional area, which then increases the drag area and the total drag, the actual force on the car. That means that the car is using more fuel to go the same distance. So that's how rounding the roof and the roof itself affects the aerodynamics of the car. We'll quickly go through and recap what we covered just to keep it fresh in your mind. So overall, if we have a very square roof, then like these edges are very sharp. The flow coming in will hit the first edge, it will separate. And if it doesn't reattach by the time we get to the, the roof, the back of the end roof, it will then just have a massive weight. If it does somehow manage to uh, reattach, we'll get to the back and it will get um, separation again here. And both of these regions increase the drag a lot. If we round these corners a little bit, so like here, for example, we can then get the flow to stay attached much better over the front and the back. That reduces the drag coefficient a lot, primarily through the pressure drag. Now, there is a limiting case to this where if we keep rounding the roof, we're not going to be increasing or reducing the drag more and more. We're going to actually increase the drag at some point. And that is because as we round the roof more, we actually have more lift being produced by this car. That's also bad for stability but also because we are now introducing this term called the induced drag. And this comes from um, the aeronautical field. And this is a interesting term because it is often misappropriated in a lot of different situations. So for example, just any vortex is often called an induced drag, but it's technically not. Induced drag it comes from this term lift induced drag. So if it's not coming from lift, it's not being induced by lift, then it's technically not lift induced drag. It's not induced drag, it's vortex drag. So that's a general definition. But in this particular case, because we have lift being produced, this vortex or any other loss that's occurring because of this lift is induced drag. So by running the roof a lot, we increase the lift that is being produced, which then results in the induced drag skyrocketing. What's more, if we round the roof even more and more, we increase the cross-sectional area. If we increase the cross-sectional area, coming down to this equation of drag equals half times the density times the velocity squared times the cross-sectional area times the drag coefficient, the total drag will now increase because the cross section area is greater. So there is this sweet spot here where rounding the roof a little bit, rounding these corners a little bit is great. Too much will result in too much drag. That's it in this video. Make sure to like, subscribe. And if you want to check out a textbook that goes into this in more detail and other parts of a car, check out Automotive Aerodynamics by Joseph Katz. I left that in the link in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out, amigos.